The morning at Kipara's prestigious Zeta Academy was unlike any other, with the interstellar sun casting a bright glow over the colossal floating campus. As spacecrafts from across the galaxy docked at the Academy's grand spaceport, a diverse crowd of students from various species and planets thronged the arrival bay, buzzing with excitement and a tinge of first-day nerves. Among them, a relatively small, unassuming human shuttle made its approach. The docking clamps engaged with a soft thud, signaling the shuttle's secure attachment to the port. As the hatch slowly hissed open, Jack Reynolds emerged, stepping into the alien world of Zeta Academy. He was an average-sized human male, with sharp eyes that scanned his surroundings carefully, betraying his inner turmoil of being the pioneering human in a dominantly alien institution. Jack adjusted his translator device, ensuring it was functioning perfectly. The device, fitted snugly around his neck, was crucial for understanding and interacting with the myriad of languages spoken at the academy. He smoothed down his simple but smart academy uniform, taking a deep breath as he joined the flow of students heading towards the main hall. The alien students varied dramatically in appearance. Some glided along with flowing tentacles, others hovered above the ground with translucent wings, while a few walked on multiple spindly legs. Despite the diversity, Jack noticed the stares and curious glances directed at him, a mixture of intrigue and skepticism evident in the alien eyes. It was clear that his presence was something out of the ordinary, and murmurs filled the air each time he passed another group. Trying to shake off the nerves, Jack focused on the towering structures of the academy ahead. The buildings were masterpieces of intergalactic architecture, blending elements from numerous worlds into a harmonious symphony of glass, metal, and pulsating energy fields. Screens floating around announced schedules and events, highlighting the upcoming orientation session that Jack was headed for. As he made his way, a friendly voice called out to him, You must be the new human student. The speaker was a tall, lanky creature with skin that shimmered like a starlit night. Jack turned to face Vero, the Geltrix, whose warm smile was punctuated by a soft glow from his skin. Heard a lot about you already. I'm Vero, he said, extending one of his luminescent limbs in a friendly gesture. Jack took Vero's hand, feeling the gentle tingle of the Geltrix's touch. Yes, that's me. I'm Jack Reynolds. First time away from Earth and quite the journey it was, he replied, his voice steady but filled with a mix of excitement and apprehension. Vero laughed, a melodious sound that seemed to put Jack at ease. Well, Jack, you've got quite the adventure ahead. Zeta Academy is a place of learning and discovery, not just about the sciences, but about each other. Come on, I'll show you around. Think of me as your unofficial guide. Jack's tour with Vero was a whirlwind introduction to the staggering diversity and technological wonders of Zeta Academy. They had just passed the holographic arenas, where students from different planets practiced their species' traditional sports and combat skills. When they reached the bustling Central Plaza, a hub of student activity filled with stalls and social areas. Here, the density of the crowd increased, and the air was vibrant with alien dialects, laughter, and the digital hum of various devices. Above, banners of shimmering light displayed welcome messages in countless languages, with a special nod to Jack. Welcome, Jack Reynolds, our first human student. Vero, noticing the extra attention Jack was getting, grinned and said, Looks like you're a bit of a celebrity around here, huh? He clapped Jack on the back with a friendly nudge. Don't worry, most of it's just curiosity. We don't get many humans around these parts. As they continued walking, a figure detached itself from a nearby group and approached them. It was a human girl, around Jack's age with an assertive stride and a confident gaze that caught Jack by surprise. Her brown hair was tied back into a neat ponytail, and her eyes sparkled with intelligence and a hint of mischief. Hi, you must be Jack, she said, extending her hand, her voice clear and resonant. I'm Mia. I just transferred here from another sector. Heard there was another human and figured I should come and say hi. Jack shook her hand, relieved and pleasantly surprised to meet another human. Nice to meet you, Mia. I was starting to think I was the only one. Mia laughed, a sound that made several nearby students turn their heads. Well, you were, until about an hour ago. Looks like we're both in for quite the experience. Vero looked between the two humans, his face lighting up with a brighter glow. Great, you two can team up then. It's always good to have a familiar face around in the beginning. Speaking of which, have you guys seen the simulation labs yet? Before Jack could answer, a sudden commotion stirred at the edge of the plaza. 
A group of Yaltrick students known for their elitist attitudes were making their way through the crowd. The leader, a tall figure with sleek silver skin and piercing blue eyes, stopped to look Jack and Mia over with an expression of thinly veiled disdain. Ah, the humans, he said, his voice carrying a chilling edge. I heard about your species, very primitive, still bound by physical forms. It's a wonder you've managed to travel the stars at all. Mia's eyes narrowed, but Jack put a calming hand on her shoulder. We're all here to learn, aren't we? He replied, keeping his tone even. Maybe we'll surprise you. The Yaltrix leader snorted, his eyes scanning Jack and Mia as if sizing them up for the first time. Perhaps we shall see. Come, let us not waste time. With that he turned, his group following him closely, leaving a tense atmosphere swirling around Jack, Mia, and Vero. Vero sighed, his light dimming slightly. Don't mind them. The Yaltrix can be a bit harsh, but they're not all like that. You'll find your place here, I'm sure of it. Jack and Mia exchanged a look, a silent agreement forming between them. They were different, yes, but here at Zeta Academy, they were also the same. Together, they would face whatever came next, proving that humanity had more to offer than anyone might expect. With a renewed sense of determination, they followed Varro toward the simulation labs, ready to explore more of what their new school had to offer. Over the next few days, Jack and Mia settled into the rhythm of Zeta Academy life, attending lectures on quantum engineering, xenobiology, and interstellar politics, among other subjects. They found themselves drawn into the vibrant student community, joining study groups and participating in various extracurricular activities. Yet, despite their growing involvement, the shadow of the Yaltrick students' disdain lingered. As they navigated their way through the complexities of alien interactions, the Academy announced the much-anticipated annual intergalactic project competition. This event was a highlight at Zeta, bringing together students from different species to collaborate on projects that combine technology, science, and creativity. During the project team announcement, Jack and Mia found themselves paired with Tress, a Yaltrick student from the group that had initially confronted them, and Vero, their ever-friendly Geltrix guide. The project's challenge was formidable to develop a prototype that could harness the power of black holes for energy generation. The team's first meeting was awkward. Tress seemed particularly skeptical of Jack and Mia's abilities. I do hope you both are not as limited as your physical forms suggest, Tress remarked coldly, eyeing them with a mix of curiosity and disdain. Vero, ever the mediator, quickly intervened. Tress, remember, every species brings something unique to the table. Let's give them a chance to show us what humans are capable of. The project meetings that followed were tense, with Tress frequently questioning Jack and Mia's suggestions and contributions. However, Jack's knowledge of astrophysics and Mia's expertise in quantum mechanics slowly began to turn the tide. They proposed innovative solutions that none of their alien classmates had considered, blending human ingenuity with the advanced technologies at Zeta. One evening, while working late in the lab, the group faced a significant setback. A critical component of their prototype malfunctioned during a simulation, threatening to derail the entire project. As the system alarms blared, Jack's quick reflexes and calm under pressure came to the forefront. He implemented a risky but clever workaround that stabilized the prototype. Tress, who had been ready to attribute the failure to human error, was taken aback. That was impressive, Tress admitted reluctantly watching as Jack and Mia worked together seamlessly to correct the issue. Thanks, Jack replied, wiping his brow. Sometimes you just have to think on your feet. We humans are pretty good at improvisation. Mia smiled, adding, It's one of our strengths. We might not have the best technology where we come from, but we learn to make do and innovate with what we have. From that night on, the dynamic within the group began to shift. Tress became more receptive to the human duo's ideas, even asking for their opinions on various technical aspects of the project. As their respect for each other grew, so did their friendship. The team spent countless hours together, refining their prototype and preparing for the competition. Through shared meals, late-night study sessions, and intense brainstorming meetings, they learned more about each other's cultures and capabilities. As the competition day drew nearer, the team's project evolved from a mere academic exercise into a symbol of interspecies collaboration and mutual respect. Jack and Mia had not only contributed significantly to the project, but had also begun to change some long-held prejudices about humans among their peers. 
With the final presentation looming, the team was confident and united. They were ready to showcase not just their technological innovation, but the unexpected and powerful collaboration between a group of unlikely allies. The energy was palpable on the morning of the intergalactic project presentation. The hall was filled with an eclectic mix of species, each group eagerly discussing their projects. Jack, Mia, Varro, and Tress arrived early to set up their prototype, a sleek device designed to harness the energy of black holes safely and efficiently. As they approached their designated station, Jack's heart sank. The prototype, which they had tested and secured the night before, was visibly damaged. Panels were askew, and the core containment module appeared tampered with. Nearby, their digital display, which held all their research data and simulation results, was offline. What happened here? Mia gasped, rushing to assess the damage. Tress's usual composure broke, his eyes flashing with anger. Sabotage, he concluded, examining the disrupted interfaces. Someone did this deliberately. Vero looked around, his luminescent skin dimming with concern. We need to report this now, the council must know. Jack nodded, feeling a surge of frustration. First, let's see what can be salvaged. We can't let this stop us. Together, they worked rapidly, diagnosing the damage. Mia attempted to reboot the digital display while Tress and Vero focused on the physical repairs of the prototype. Jack accessed the backup data on his portable device. Thankfully, he had insisted on extra precautions, which now seemed prescient. As they worked, a crowd began to gather, whispers and murmurs spreading through the onlookers. The competition officials arrived, led by Professor Nalrex, a respected figure in the field of intergalactic energy solutions. What has happened here? Nalrex's voice boomed, carrying a mix of concern and disappointment. We believe someone sabotaged our project, Professor, Tress explained, his voice steady despite the underlying vexation. Professor Nalrex surveyed the damage, his brow furrowed. This is most unfortunate. Zeta Academy prides itself on fairness and integrity. We will investigate this matter thoroughly. For now, do what you can for your presentation. The Council will take these circumstances into account. Buoyed by the professor's words, the team redoubled their efforts. Jack and Mia managed to restore the data display while Tress and Vero made crucial adjustments to the prototype, ensuring it would operate, albeit at reduced capacity. As they prepared to present, Mia pulled Jack aside. I've got a hunch about who might be behind this. I noticed the clerics team hanging around here last night after hours. They seemed really interested in our setup. Jack nodded, his mind racing. Let's keep that to ourselves for now and focus on the presentation. We can look into it afterward. Right now, we need to show everyone what we're capable of, despite the setback. The time came to present, and despite the earlier chaos, the team stood together at the podium. Jack started, explaining the concept and the science behind their project. Mia followed, detailing the potential applications of their technology, from energy generation to space travel. Tress contributed by discussing the innovative engineering techniques they employed, and Varro concluded by emphasizing the project's importance in fostering interspecies collaboration. The audience, initially skeptical, was gradually drawn in by their clear explanations, innovative science, and the obvious dedication of the team. When they revealed the prototype, even in its compromised state, it operated successfully, garnering applause and murmurs of approval from the crowd. After the presentation, while the judges deliberated, Jack, Mia, Tress, and Vero gathered their things. They felt a mix of pride and anxiety, knowing they had overcome significant obstacles to share their vision for the future. Whatever happens, Mia said, looking at her team, I'm proud of what we achieved together. Agreed, Tress responded, a newfound respect in his tone. Our project was about more than just winning a competition. It's about proving that different species can work together to solve universal problems. As they waited for the results, Jack's thoughts drifted to the sabotage. Determined to uncover the truth, he knew their challenge wasn't over. This incident had united them, but now they needed to ensure that such acts of deceit were brought to light for the sake of the Academy's integrity and their own. As the judges deliberated, Jack and Mia decided to discreetly investigate the suspected sabotage. They had a brief window before the results announcement, and they were determined to find proof. Vero and Tress, while initially hesitant, agreed to help, realizing the importance of clearing any doubts about their project's integrity. 
Jack and Mia started by revisiting the scene of the sabotage. They carefully examined the area around their booth for any clues that might have been overlooked in the initial confusion. Mia, with her keen eye for detail, noticed inconsistencies in the damage pattern. Look here, she pointed out to Jack. These marks are too precise, too deliberate. It's not just random vandalism. Meanwhile, Vero and Tress spoke with other teams and attendees to see if anyone had noticed suspicious activity around their booth the previous evening. Their inquiries led them to a group of students who had been working late in the lab adjacent to theirs. These students mentioned seeing members of the clerics team lingering around the area after hours, which aligned with Mia's earlier suspicions. With this information, Jack and Mia decided to confront the clerics team directly. They found them at their booth, nervously preparing for their own presentation. The leader of the clerics team, Sylor, a tall, thin creature with reflective skin, greeted them warily. We heard you had some trouble with your project, Sylor said, trying to mask his nervousness with a smirk. Yes, we did, Jack replied calmly, locking eyes with Sylor. And we have reason to believe someone from your team was involved in sabotaging it. Sylor's smirk faltered, and he glanced at his teammates who shifted uncomfortably. That's a serious accusation, he retorted. Do you have any proof? Mia stepped forward, her expression firm. Multiple witnesses saw your team around our booth last night, and the way our project was damaged, it suggests someone with technical knowledge was behind it. It wasn't random. The confrontation attracted the attention of nearby students and faculty, including Professor Nalrex, who approached to see what the commotion was about. Jack explained their findings to the professor, who listened intently and then turned to the clerics team. Sylor, if these allegations are true, it would be a grave breach of our academy's values. What do you have to say? Under the increasing scrutiny, one of the clerics team members broke down and confessed. We were just scared of losing to them, he admitted, his voice trembling. Sylor thought if we could delay their presentation, we'd have a better chance. Sylor hung his head, unable to deny his teammates' words. Professor Nalrex sighed deeply. This is disappointing. I will need to discuss this with the council. There will be consequences. He turned to Jack and his team. I commend you for your integrity and diligence in uncovering the truth. We will ensure that your project is judged fairly, despite these unfortunate events. As they walked away from the confrontation, Jack felt a mix of relief and disappointment. I wish it hadn't come to this, he told his team. Mia nodded, squeezing his shoulder. But we did the right thing. And we showed them, everyone, that we're here to compete fairly and honorably. The final results of the competition were delayed as the council took the sabotage into account. Later that day, when the results were finally announced, Jack, Mia, Vero, and Tress were awarded second place with an honorary mention for their sportsmanship and resilience. After the tumultuous events surrounding the sabotage, the mood among Jack, Mia, Vero, and Tress transformed. The adversity had brought them closer, forging a bond of trust and mutual respect that transcended their initial differences. They were not just teammates anymore. They were allies united by a shared experience and a common goal. With the sabotage issue resolved, their prototype's functionality was fully restored thanks to the additional time granted by the Academy Council. They had a few days before a special session where they would present their fully operational project to the Academy and invited external delegates from various interstellar corporations and academic institutions. During these days, the team worked with a renewed vigor. Jack and Mia focused on enhancing the prototype's efficiency, incorporating advanced human ingenuity with alien technology. Varro contributed his expertise in energy modulation, while Tress, now fully cooperative and supportive, provided critical insights into spatial dynamics. Finally, the day of the special session arrived. The auditorium was packed with an audience that included some of the most esteemed figures in the galaxy. The air buzzed with anticipation and the weight of what was at stake, not just the success of their project, but the potential for future collaborations and sponsorships. Jack started the presentation by recounting the concept and design of their prototype, carefully explaining the innovative integration of human and alien technologies. Mia then took over, describing the potential applications of their energy source, from powering interstellar travel to providing sustainable energy solutions for less developed planets. Vero demonstrated the prototype's unique features, showcasing its ability to harness and convert black hole energy into usable power with minimal loss. 
the display screens illuminated with impressive graphs and data, eliciting nods of approval from the audience. Tress concluded the presentation with a discussion on the safety measures and ethical considerations of their technology. His detailed analysis and evident passion for the project added a layer of depth to the presentation, highlighting the team's comprehensive approach to the challenge. As the presentation ended, the auditorium erupted in applause. The judges, a panel of distinguished scientists and industry leaders, exchanged impressed glances, their earlier skepticism washed away by the undeniable success of the presentation. The feedback session was overwhelmingly positive. One of the judges, a renowned physicist, praised their innovative approach, stating, This team has not only developed a groundbreaking energy solution, but has also exemplified the power of diversity and collaboration in pushing the boundaries of what we believe is possible. Another judge, an influential tech entrepreneur, added, The synergy between human creativity and alien technology presents exciting new horizons for us all. We are keen to explore further collaborations. The team received a standing ovation as they walked off the stage, their hearts swelling with pride and accomplishment. They had turned a potential disaster into a resounding success, earning the respect and admiration of their peers and the broader galactic community. At the celebration that evening, the team reflected on their journey. We started this as a group of strangers from different worlds and now look at us, Mia said, her voice filled with emotion. Tress, his usual reserved demeanor softened, agreed. Yes, it seems we have much to learn from each other. This is just the beginning. Vero, glowing brighter than ever, raised his glass. To new horizons and friendships that defy the stars. Jack smiled, feeling a profound sense of fulfillment and excitement for the future. To new horizons, he echoed, his eyes shining with anticipation for the next adventure. As the night wore on, the team celebrated not just their project's triumph, but the beginning of what promised to be a lasting legacy at Zeta Academy a legacy of innovation, unity, and boundless potential. The successful presentation and the reception that followed marked a high point for Jack, Mia, Vero, and Tress. As the evening celebration unfolded around them, the atmosphere was light with laughter and the clinking of glasses. Students, faculty, and distinguished guests mingled, discussing the promising future ignited by the team's innovative project. Jack stood by a large window overlooking the sprawling academy campus his mind replaying the day's events. The stars outside seemed to shine a little brighter, mirroring the sense of accomplishment he felt. Mia joined him, her expression thoughtful. We did it, Jack. We really did it, she said, her voice tinged with disbelief and pride. Jack nodded, turning to her with a smile. We did? And think about it, Mia. Our work might just change how energy is harnessed across galaxies. Their conversation was interrupted by Vero, who approached them with his usual bright demeanor. You two look awfully serious for a party. Come on, let's join the others. There's a toast coming up. As they gathered with the rest of their team and some faculty members, the Academy's principal, Dr. Lorena, called for everyone's attention. She was an esteemed figure in the academic world, known for her pioneering research in interspecies technologies. Holding up her glass, she addressed the crowd. Tonight we celebrate not only an extraordinary achievement in scientific innovation, but also the spirit of collaboration that Zeta Academy stands for. This project has shown us the power of unity and the incredible potential that lies in diversity. Jack, Mia, Vero, and Tress, you have set a new standard for what our students can accomplish together. The applause was thunderous, resonating through the hall, as everyone raised their glasses in a toast. The team exchanged looks of gratitude and mutual respect, their earlier challenges transformed into valuable lessons. After the toast, Dr. Lorena pulled Jack and Mia aside. I want you both to know that your success today has sparked a decision among the faculty. We are planning to launch a new initiative focused on promoting human-alien collaborative projects, inspired by your work. Jack was taken aback, a rush of pride and responsibility washing over him. That's incredible, Dr. Lorena. I'm honored that our project could inspire something so meaningful. Mia, equally moved, added, We hope it paves the way for more humans to explore opportunities here and beyond. The principal nodded, her eyes twinkling with anticipation. That is precisely the goal, and I would like you both to play a key role in this initiative as ambassadors. As the night progressed, the celebration became a reflection on the broader implications of their achievements. Discussions turned to the future to the partnerships that might form as a result of their work, 
and to the unknown challenges and triumphs that lay ahead. Later, under the starlit sky of Kapara, Jack and Mia found a quiet spot to talk about their personal journeys and dreams. Today was just the beginning, Mia. There's so much more we can do, Jack said, looking at the vast universe. Mia nodded, her gaze also fixed on the stars. With everything we've learned and all the doors that are opening, the possibilities are endless. Their conversation drifted to their future, to the roles they would play not just in advancing technology, but in fostering intergalactic understanding and cooperation. As the evening drew to a close, Jack felt a profound connection not only to his team, but to the Academy and the broader interstellar community. It was a moment of new beginnings, of horizons expanded, and of a future bright with promise. As the academic year drew to a close, Jack and Mia were abuzz with excitement about the future. The success of their project and the launch of the new initiative for human-alien collaboration had opened up unprecedented opportunities for them both. They were not just students anymore. They were pioneers in a rapidly expanding frontier of interspecies cooperation. In the final weeks at Zeta Academy, Jack and Mia were involved in setting up the framework for the new initiative. They met with faculty, external advisors, and potential sponsors, sharing their vision and laying the groundwork for future projects. Their story had become a beacon, attracting interest from various corners of the galaxy, keen on exploring the potential of human creativity combined with alien technologies. As they worked on this exciting new chapter, Jack and Mia also prepared for their next personal adventure, internships with the Intergalactic Science Council. These positions were highly coveted, offering them a chance to work on cutting-edge projects with some of the brightest minds in the galaxy. During their last day at Zeta Academy, the campus was alive with the energy of departure and new beginnings. Students were saying their goodbyes, exchanging contact information, and making plans to visit each other's home planets. Jack and Mia, along with Vero and Tress, gathered their belongings from their dorms, their conversations filled with reflections and anticipations. Can you believe it's over? Mia asked, looking around her almost empty room. It feels like we just started, and now we're heading off into the big wide universe. Jack smiled, carrying a box of his belongings. It's just another beginning, Mia. We've got a whole universe to explore and change, but I'm going to miss this place. As they walked towards the spaceport, Vero and Tress joined them. Despite his usual lightheartedness, Vero seemed somber. I'm going to miss you guys, he admitted. You've both changed so much here. You've changed us. Tress nodded, his earlier reserve softened by months of friendship. You have indeed. Remember, you always have allies here. Don't be strangers. At the spaceport, as they loaded their belongings onto the shuttle that would take them to their new positions, Dr. Lorena and several other faculty members came to see them off. There were hugs, handshakes, and a few teary eyes. Dr. Lorena addressed them one last time. Jack, Mia, you've both been extraordinary, not just in your academic contributions, but in showing us the power of diversity and determination. Keep pushing boundaries, keep learning, and keep making us proud. The shuttle's doors began to close, and Jack and Mia waved goodbye to their friends and mentors. As the shuttle detached and began its ascent from Kipara, Jack and Mia watched Zeta Academy shrink away into the distance, a jewel amidst the stars. Seated next to each other, they talked about their plans and dreams, their voices full of hope and excitement. They were heading into uncharted territory, armed with knowledge, experience, and a deep-seated belief in the power of collaboration. Jack turned to Mia his expression resolute. Whatever comes next, we're ready for it. Together, we're going to make a real difference. Mia nodded, her eyes bright. Together, she echoed, her hand finding Jack's as they faced the vast expanse of space ahead of them. They were not just moving towards new roles, they were stepping into a future they had helped to shape, a future that promised challenges, growth, and endless possibilities. Months after their departure from Zeta Academy, Jack and Mia were deeply immersed in their internships at the Intergalactic Science Council. Their projects were ambitious, aiming to implement scalable energy solutions across multiple planetary systems based on the groundbreaking prototype they developed at Zeta. Their work, though challenging, was a testament to their growth and the expectations placed upon them as pioneers of interspecies collaboration. Back at Zeta Academy, the impact of their project continued to resonate. Inspired by their success, 
the Academy had officially launched the Human-Alien Collaboration Initiative, a program aimed at fostering more projects that would bridge the gaps between different species and cultures. Varro and Tress, who had stayed on at the Academy to assist in mentoring new students, often shared stories of how Jack and Mia's work was influencing the next generation. One day, Jack received a communication from Varro, inviting him and Mia to participate in a virtual seminar hosted by Zeta Academy. The seminar was designed to showcase the progress of the initiative and to highlight successful ongoing projects. Accepting the invitation eagerly, Jack and Mia prepared to share their experiences and insights from the field. The day of the seminar arrived, and Jack and Mia connected from their respective locations, their images projected in the Academy's main auditorium filled with students, faculty, and several distinguished guests. Vero introduced them with glowing pride, and the audience greeted them with enthusiastic applause. Jack started the talk by discussing the technical challenges they faced and how their education at Zeta had prepared them to tackle these issues. Mia then took over, focusing on the importance of cultural sensitivity and adaptability in their work, emphasizing how these skills were critical in their interactions with various alien species and governments. As they spoke, it was clear that their story was more than just a successful academy project. It had become a cornerstone of a much larger movement towards unity and innovation across the galaxy. Following their presentation, the floor was opened for questions. Students from various species expressed their curiosity about everything from technical details of their projects to their personal experiences working in such diverse teams. Jack and Mia answered each question with enthusiasm, hoping to inspire these young minds as they had been inspired by their mentors. After the seminar, Dr. Lorena addressed the audience, her voice filled with emotion. Seeing Jack and Mia today leading the way in such critical work reinforces our belief in the power of education and cooperation. They are not just alumni. They are pioneers who are shaping the future of our galaxy. The seminar concluded with a round of applause, and Jack and Mia signed off, feeling a renewed sense of purpose. They were reminded that their journey at Zeta Academy was just the beginning of a larger narrative they were now helping to write. Over the following months, Jack and Mia continued their work, each milestone and achievement contributing to the legacy they had started at Zeta. Years later, as both rose to prominent positions within the Intergalactic Science Council, they often reflected on their humble beginnings at Zeta Academy. They had not only witnessed, but had actively participated in a cultural shift towards greater understanding and cooperation between humans and aliens. Their legacy at Zeta Academy continued to thrive, with the Human-Alien Collaboration Initiative becoming one of the most respected programs in the galaxy, drawing students and scholars from countless worlds. Jack and Mia, forever part of that legacy, remained committed to their mission, driven by the knowledge that their work was not just about scientific advancement, but about building bridges across the stars. Years passed and the universe felt smaller to Jack and Mia, now leading figures at the Intergalactic Science Council. Their work on sustainable energy solutions had become a cornerstone for planetary development and had facilitated peaceful relations between numerous star systems. They were often at the forefront of conferences and symposiums, sharing their expertise and inspiring a new generation of scientists and diplomats. Meanwhile, back at Zeta Academy, the legacy of their initial project continued to thrive. The Human-Alien Collaboration Initiative had grown exponentially, attracting not only students but also researchers and policymakers from across the galaxy. It had become a model for other institutions promoting a culture of innovation and inclusivity. Jack, now a seasoned scientist and an advocate for interspecies cooperation, was invited to give a keynote speech at Zeta Academy's centennial celebration. The event was a grand affair, attended by some of the most influential figures in the galaxy, including diplomats, scholars, and pioneers of interstellar exploration. Arriving at the Academy, Jack was overwhelmed by nostalgia as he walked through the now familiar corridors, which had seen so much change. The walls were adorned with displays chronicling the Academy's history, including a special section dedicated to the project that started it all, his and Mia's collaboration on black hole energy harnessing. Mia, who had collaborated with Jack on numerous projects since their internship days, joined him at the Academy. Together, they met with current students, sharing insights and experiences. Mia's discussion on the integration of quantum mechanics with interstellar diplomatic strategies was particularly well-received, sparking lively debates among the students. 
During his keynote speech, Jack reflected on their humble beginnings and the unforeseen journey that followed. When Mia and I started at Zeta Academy, we could not have imagined where our curiosity and drive would take us. This institution taught us not only about the stars and the science, but also about understanding and cooperation. It's these lessons that have guided us through our careers. He continued, Today we stand at the threshold of new horizons, as we look not only to further our scientific endeavors but to deepen our bonds with all species of the galaxy. The challenges are great, but so are the opportunities. Let us continue to aspire, to learn, and to unite. The applause was resounding, echoing through the grand auditorium, filled with individuals motivated by Jack's words. After the celebration, Jack and Mia took a quiet walk around the campus, revisiting the old lab where they had spent countless hours working on their prototype. They discussed the future, plans for new research initiatives and potential peace treaties that could be facilitated through scientific collaboration. It's amazing to see how much has grown from our efforts, Mia remarked, watching a group of young students laughing together. Look at them, humans, Geltrix, Yaltrix, and others all working together. It's how it should be. Jack nodded, feeling a profound sense of fulfillment. We've been a part of something special here, and it will continue long after we're gone. This, he gestured around, is our legacy. As the sun set over Zeta Academy, casting long shadows and bathing the campus in a soft golden light, Jack and Mia stood together, united not just by their past, but by a shared commitment to a brighter, more inclusive future. Their journey had taught them that with curiosity, resilience, and collaboration, the possibilities were limitless. Looking up at the stars, they felt a familiar thrill an eagerness for the next discovery, the next challenge, the next chance to make a difference. The universe was vast, and their journey was far from over. They were ready to meet it head-on, together, as Jack and Mia continued to carve out their path within the Intergalactic Science Council. Their influence echoed back through the halls of Zeta Academy, where their pioneering project had first taken shape. Their story, now part of the Academy's legacy, served as a beacon of inspiration for a new generation of students eager to make their mark on the galaxy. Back at Zeta, the initiative they helped to found was celebrating a new milestone, its establishment as a permanent department within the academy. The department was dedicated to fostering collaborative projects that brought together diverse species, utilizing the unique strengths and perspectives of each to tackle complex galactic challenges. On a crisp, starlit evening, Zeta Academy planned a special ceremony to commemorate this milestone. Vero, now a senior mentor in the department, extended a heartfelt invitation to Jack and Mia to attend. Their return to Zeta was filled with a mix of nostalgia and pride as they walked through the now-expanded campus, marveling at the new facilities and labs that had been inspired by their initial work. The ceremony was held in the largest auditorium, beautifully decorated with symbols representing various galactic cultures. As Jack and Mia entered, they were greeted with warm applause from students, faculty, and numerous dignitaries from across the stars. The walls displayed interactive timelines and holographic projections of significant projects and breakthroughs, with their original black hole energy prototype featured prominently. Pharaoh took the stage to welcome everyone, his voice resonant and his skin glowing with pride. Tonight, we celebrate not just the success of a department, but the spirit of curiosity and cooperation that it represents. Our guests of honor, Jack and Mia, helped plant the seeds for this initiative which has grown beyond what any of us had envisioned. Mia then took the podium, sharing their journey and the lessons learned along the way. When Jack and I started here, we couldn't have anticipated where our curiosity would lead us. It's a testament to Zeta's commitment to diversity and innovation that we are here today, celebrating this achievement. Jack followed, his speech focusing on the future. The challenges facing our galaxy are vast, but so are the opportunities to address them. Through collaboration, we draw on a wider pool of ideas, perspectives, and solutions. This new department is a hub for such collaboration, and I can't wait to see the wonders it will achieve. After the speeches, the floor opened for a panel discussion with current students and alumni, facilitating a lively exchange of ideas about potential new projects and the integration of more alien technologies into human-led research. The event concluded with a surprise announcement from the Academy's principal, a new scholarship fund named after Jack and Mia, 
aimed at supporting students from underrepresented species who wish to pursue studies in energy science and intergalactic relations. As the celebration carried on into the night, Jack and Mia mingled with the attendees, sharing stories and offering guidance. They felt a profound connection to this place and its mission, reminded of how their academic and professional journeys had intertwined to spark meaningful change. Later, standing on a balcony overlooking the academy grounds, Jack and Mia reflected on their ongoing legacy. Do you think we'll ever get used to this? Mia asked, a note of wonder in her voice. Jack chuckled, squeezing her hand. I hope not. Getting used to it might mean we've stopped pushing the boundaries, and there's still so much more to do, so many more questions to answer. Together, they looked out at the stars, their hearts full of hope and determination. Their legacy at Zeta Academy was secured, but their own story was still unfolding, driven by an unending quest for knowledge and unity in the vast star-filled galaxy.